Let's knit a handy cloth at your service knit cloth by yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to another Yarn Inspirations tutorial. I'm your host, Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Let's get started. In today's video, you will need a cotton number four weight yarn. We're using Bernat Handicrafter Cotton in color pale yellow for contrast A. For contrast B, we're using color overcast. To download your pattern, click on the link in the description below. In today's pattern, we're going to be making the Bernat At Your Service Knit Cloth. This is a great little washcloth or little hand towel that you can hang on your oven door handle. And uh, this is made with cotton number four. You'll be working with two colors and you'll also need a button. This button is five eighths inch or one and a half centimeters. And I'm just showing you a nice smooth button. You also need a tapestry needle for weaving in your yarn, another needle with an eye that will go through your button. You'll need a removable stitch marker or two if you like. And then you'll need uh, two other stitch markers. And it's really my tip. It's not in the pattern, but this will make making your edge detail um, extra easy. You'll need a measuring tape and of course the needles you are going to need a US size 7 or four and a half millimeter knitting needle or size to obtain the gauge. This is an interchangeable needle. You can work with straights if you like. I've got a 16 inch circular that I'm working in a flat panel. All right well let's get started. For your cast on, you're going to cast on 49 stitches in whatever method you are comfortable. I'm going to show the long tail cast on. You are going to work uh, with contrast A. I'm using pale yellow here. I've got my tail in the front, my ball at the back, and I'm just gonna put it right on top of my needle here. And I pulled out about a yard and a half. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna grab it with our non-dominant hand here with the bottom three fingers, and then we're going to put our thumb and our index finger inside here and spread it open kind of creating a little heart shape here and we're going to pull back and scoop up from that loop that's around the thumb and go down through the one that's where the index finger is and then go down through the thumb again and then pull that through and you've got two stitches on here you can start with a slip knot or you can start with holding on like this also a tip i find you get consistent stitches by putting your finger on the stitch you just created so it continues this nice gap and your cast on isn't super tight in this particular pattern especially with cotton yarn you'll find that a valuable asset for you all right continue casting on scoop up for that thumb down for the finger and down through the thumb again and pull that, move your finger down to get that consistency, and continue. You're going to cast on 49 stitches, and uh, pause your video and meet me back up when you have casted those on for the next step. Okay, so we've casted on our stitches and we need to work one inch or two and a half centimeters in length in garter stitch, which is knitting every row. We do want to note that the first row that we work is going to be the wrong side. So when you complete this row and you turn it over, place a removable stitch marker in that stitch there so you know that the other side is the right side. So we're going to work for... Um, one inch let's go ahead and work our first couple stitches together insert into the front leg of this stitch and yarn over wrapping that yarn around and just pull that stitch right on through to make your new stitch and be sure and let that old one drop off and just continue working your yarn overs pulling it through making the new stitch knitting every stitch as you go if you're a beginner at this, you might want to check your stitch count over here to make sure that you had uh, let all those stitches go before you continue. Make sure that you continue to have 49 stitches across. Okay, so we're just going to continue working on this until you get to the end of the row. I'll meet you back up and show you turning and placing that stitch marker. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you back when you're ready. See you soon. Okay, I've worked my last stitch and I'm going to turn that over to reveal the right side of the work, pick up my removable stitch marker and just insert it in 
to the front of this stitch here that was just worked from the previous row and I'm just going to let that dangle and that shows me that this is the right side. So we'll just continue working until we get to one inch and when you end after completing one inch and you're at the back of uh, the end of the wrong side row, that's when we will stop. So pause your video, work your one inch end on a wrong side row at one inch and I will meet you back up to continue in the pattern. See you soon. All right, we're ready to move on with the first row. We've measured our one inch or two and a half centimeters. And I've made nine rows if you wanted to know how much uh, I needed to do. If you wanna count the ridges, uh, because the right side is on the front, so when we make a wrong side knit stitch, it becomes a purl ridge in the front. So I can count those in, in uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. That represents the rows, because in between those purl rows are a knit row. Okay, so I've got nine rows. I'm on the 10th row, the right side, and and I'm going to knit the first five stitches to make an edge stitch. So let's knit those. One, two, three, four, five. That creates the edge of my cloth and that becomes your border. So on the first five stitches and the last five stitches, you will knit those stitches on every row. What I did to remember where to start and stop my stitch pattern, which we, we will get into next, I put on a stitch marker. It can be fixed or it can be a movable, removable one, uh, but it doesn't matter. So let's work on the stitch pattern that goes in between the stitch markers. The first stitch is going to be purl. Move your yarn between those needles to the front, and we're going to insert our needle into the front leg of this stitch, okay? And then we will uh, yarn over and then push that yarn to the back to make a new stitch and then let the old one fall off. Now we wanna move our yarn to the back and create a knit stitch. So we knit that next stitch and that is it for the stitch pattern. You are going to purl knit across until you get to the last six stitches and um, that's, that's um, all you need to know for now. So continue doing that. Meet me back up when you have six stitches left and I'll show you how to finish this off. Be sure to move that yarn from the front to the back in between those needles because if you don't, you will create an extra stitch. Let me show you how to do this. So when I make my purl stitch and I don't move my yarn to the back and I knit the next stitch, it creates that extra stitch. So we don't want that to happen. So be sure and move that back. All right, continue working that pattern, knit, purl, knit, purl, or purl, knit, purl, knit, across until the last six stitches and I'll see you soon. All right, we're onto our last six stitches and we want to purl this last stitch, move that yarn to the front and purl, then place your stitch marker and that shows the end of that seed stitch Okay, so that pattern is in the middle now. Move our yarn to the back, and we're going to knit to the end of the row. So knit all five stitches. And that is it. Row one gets repeated until you have a uh, seed stitch pattern uh, with the garter stitch edging until your work from the beginning measures eight inches or 20.5 centimeters, and you're going to end on a wrong side row. So you're going to knit until you have eight inches, right all the way up to here, and you measure it just from the very beginning, and you will be on a wrong side row. So you'll be on the opposite side of this when you end it, and we'll meet back up to um, work on the shaping of the sides of the cloth. Repeat that row and I'll see you back in eight inches. See you soon. All right, so you are ready to start shaping this and making it skinny down a little bit here. We've knit to our eight inches. We finished on a wrong side row. So we are back on this correct right side. You can tell with your stitch marker here. And uh, all we need to know for these rows here is a two more stitches that you haven't done yet is a slip slip knit, which is a left leaning decrease SSK. And then you need to know a right leaning decrease, which is a K2 tog or knit two together. Those will be worked right after this stitch marker, a slip slip knit, and right before this stitch marker, a uh, K2 tog or knit two together, and that decreases that stitch by one. You continue this seed stitch in the middle, and then your edge stitches are the knit stitch. We're still in this uh, yellow color or color A, 
and uh, then we'll reinforce it with the second row on that pass on the back. So all you need to know for this shaping this side are those two stitches here to be able to do it. Let's work on those two stitches together and then you can repeat this as you need. All right, so shaping the sides, row one, right side, just work those first five stitches, knitting them. So one, two, three, four, and five, and just with the rest of the video as you need, just pause when you need. We're gonna slip that stitch marker. All right, so let's work on a slip slip knit, which is a left leaning decrease. We're going to slip these two stitches. We're gonna slip them knit wise, which means we put it in just like we're going to be working a knit stitch, except we don't, and we just slip it onto that other needle. Pick the next one up by slipping the same way, so slip knit wise. And then we're going to insert our needle that we just dropped them off of into the front of these stitches here. Okay, now they're on there. We're just going to yarn over on that needle that's sticking out the back and pull it through and it's knitting them together through that back loop. So we have just now decreased from uh, two stitches down to one stitch. So now you're just going to continue in your seed stitch and how you do that is this one right here was a knit before. So you, you're looking at a knit stitch now so we want to make it the opposite. So you're going to purl your knits and knit your purls. So let's purl this one. Okay. And then knit and go across until you have two stitches before your stitch marker and we'll work on the knit two together right leaning decrease. Pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. All right, let's work that stitch here in a purl and now we're moving on to our last two stitches before the stitch marker here. So we are going to actually insert our needle into both of these stitches at the same time. So you go to the second one down, insert into the front leg of that stitch and then to the next one as well at the same time and they're just going to yarn over. Now don't forget though that you've got to still move that yarn to the back. Okay, so you purled that last stitch so be sure and move that yarn to the back. If not, you will accidentally increase your stitches uh, again and so you will have a little decrease and increase and it'll have a little hole in your work. So you don't want to do that. So to knit two together, which is a right leaning decrease, go insert into both of those stitches at the same time, yarn over on that needle that's in the back of it and pull through that yarn. So now you have decreased from one stitch to two stitches. Slip over your stitch marker and continue on to the end of the row, knitting all five stitches. All right, so you have done the first row of shaping the sides. All right, so we flip this over and we're going to knit the first five stitches for row two. One, two, three, four, five. And slip your stitch marker over. And this very first stitch only, you're going to purl and then work your seed stitch and you're uh, knitting the purls and purling the knits. So on whichever row you're on decreasing in all the repeats that you'll see in a moment, um, you're just going to do what we've been doing. When you get to your last six stitches, which is one stitch before the stitch marker at the end of this row, you will purl that stitch. So work on this one. Be sure and purl that stitch right before the stitch marker. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up for the rest of the directions on the shaping section. See you soon. All right, so you've successfully made the first two rows of shaping your sides, row one and row two. You're gonna repeat these two rows three more times. So you'll have a total of eight rows that you did in the shaping section with color A. You'll have 41 stitches when you're completed with that. And remember to come back and you end on the end of a wrong side row and you'll be ready on a right side row to continue and we'll start working with the next color. All right, so pause that video, work those stitches and I'll see you very soon. We have made our decreases and done the eight rows and you can see it significantly decreasing down here. You should have 41 stitches remaining. And now we're going to break our yarn A and actually that's all I have left. This has used this entire skein here.
So with B, which is going to be my gray colored yarn, we'll repeat the last two rows four times more and you'll get 33 stitches. So the identical last eight rows that we just did, it we worked in this color here. Let's join that color now. All right, so we're gonna add in our new yarn here. I'm gonna pull my tail back on my yellow and add my tail for the gray and hold them back here so that they are uh, nice and snug. Go into that first stitch and yarn over with the gray. Pull it through and that stitch should be nice and tight. It shouldn't be loose because I'm holding on to them back here. You're just gonna knit your next stitch and so on and just continue with that gray holding on to those stitches in the back or the, those tails in the back and slip your stitch and we're ready to slip slip knit again. So we've got, I've slipped our, my stitch marker. I'm going to slip knit wise, slip knit wise, and go into that stitch and we're gonna knit from the back of that stitch and decreasing. And then we're just gonna continue on in our seed stitch pattern. And by now you're about six or seven stitches in, you can drop those tails and that yarn is in the back and these tails can get woven in when we've completed it. All right, so just continue on those rows, repeating that stitch uh, pattern repeat, those uh, two row repeat until you have the eight rows completed in this color. Pause your video and I'll see you for the next step. See you soon. You can see that we've added in those, those eight rows of the gray, and we've been decreasing only on the right side, but now we're gonna start decreasing on the right side and the wrong side. So let's go back to our pattern over here, and we've just completed this shape size row, these one, two rows here, and then we go down to the next paragraph, and we have another set of two rows. Here, this row one is just like we've done before, and then the second row starts doing decreases on the wrong side. And so we had purled one, now you're gonna be purling two together, which is just like a um, knit two together, and then we're going to go to the last seven stitches, or two before the stitch marker, and purl two, together through the back loop. So let's go ahead and do that now. Work one more row as you have been, meet me on the wrong side row to work a purl two together or P2 tog. See you soon. Okay, so we're on the second row and we knit five and slip that stitch marker and we are ready to decrease by purling two stitches together. So we're gonna move our yarn forward and go through the front of the loop here for a purl and the front of the next loop for a purl at the same time. And then just simply yarn over, push that on through just like a purl stitch and you've decreased from two purl stitches down to one. So two stitches down to one, decrease and continue on in your seed stitch pattern. Pause your video and meet me back up when you are ready with those, uh, your seven stitches before the end of your row or two stitches in front of your uh, stitch marker. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, so in order to purl two stitches together through the back loop, we actually have to go through the back loop of a purl stitch. Normally when you purl one uh, through the back loop, you actually go through this back loop, okay, so this is the front loop we normally go into, but we have to go into this back loop here, but what we do is we turn it towards the other side. We go the other direction and purl it. So in this case, we have to pick up two stitches. So we're gonna go into the back of this second stitch and go through these legs, both of them together, and then yarn over and then push it on through that new loop and slide it off and now you have decreased uh, from two down to one uh, purling through the back loop. So move your yarn to the back again, slip that stitch, uh, that stitch marker and complete your, the, to the end of your row. Okay. You've just completed those two rows where we've decreased on both rows. You're going to continue making those two rows four times more until you have ended with 13 stitches and meet me back up when you are ready. See you soon.
Well, all right, so we are done with this. We have got it to 13 stitches. You've got three stitches in between your markers here. And now we need a, a removable stitch marker. It says place a stitch marker or place marker at the end of last row. So I've just completed this row here and I'm going to go in and place a stitch marker. So I'm just gonna put it into that last stitch close it up and I am done with those directions. So now we're gonna move on to, so that was at the bottom here, move on to the second row. So we're going to turn our work and continue in garter stitch over the remaining 13 stitches until our work from the marker that we just placed measures three and a half inches or nine centimeters and will end on a wrong side row. So I'll meet you back up at the end of this when your work from right here measures, with your little tape measure, 13, uh, or I'm sorry, three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Pause your video, work on it, and we'll see you soon. Okay, so I've completed knitting all my rows to make a garter stitch for three and a half inches, and I just measure that up. I see that I have three and a half, which is also nine centimeters. And you can also see that I've just been working, working with just the needles for my interchangeable set. I've just taken the cord and set it to the side. It was really quite easy that way because I only had the 13 stitches. And of course, I dropped off these placed markers that we had used earlier because they're not necessary anymore. All right, so we're going to continue on to our buttonhole row. Let's get this pattern back out. We're going to knit five and then knit two together, which we've done already, and then we need to yarn over. We haven't done this in this video, so let's show that to you now. We'll go ahead and work this entire row together, and then you will continue in garter stitch for four more rows and cast off. Okay, we've ended on a wrong side row. Turn it over, and you don't even have to flip the whole thing over because it's just so small. We're going to knit five and one, knit two, three, four, five, okay? And then knit two together as we've done before. Go through both of those stitches. All right, so we've decreased down to one and now we're gonna add one back in by yarning over. Just wrap around that needle there and then insert and knit to the end, which is knitting six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Turn it and we are going to knit four more rows. Repeat that and I'll meet you back up so we can cast off together. See you soon. All right, I've done my five rows and I'm ready to cast off. You can see the buttonhole that we had made earlier. All right, so we're going to knit the first two stitches and then we just pass that first stitch up and over that second stitch and that's one stitch bound off or cast off. Knit the next one and lift that one up and over and bind that one off. And just continue going along until you get to the last loop. And then we'll just cut our yarn and draw it through the loop. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Pause your video and meet me back up in a moment. Okay, so we're just going to do that last one. And we're going to draw that last loop up long. Cut it. And now this tail can be woven in and you also need to weave in these two tails and I had tied them in just a loose knot earlier just to keep them uh, from uh, coming apart so I can just untie that now and uh, weave in our tails okay so you're just going to use a wide-eyed tapestry needle like this one and uh, weave that in let's go ahead and sew on our buttonhole Pause your video and get you a button that will match and go into this hole right here. And uh, mine is just slightly bigger than the hole. And I know that uh, I know that this yarn, a cotton yarn, will draw up a little bit when it gets washed. And so this one we will be just fine for my purposes. After weaving in all of our uh, tails, we need to sew our button on. So I've already got my uh, needle threaded. This needle I know will go through my buttonhole and I use the needle threader. You can also use a, a, a floss uh, threader, like a dental floss threader. 
and uh, I'm going to flip over my little flap here and then I've got my buttonhole I'm gonna mark where I want it I'm back on my right side and you can see where it lines up this is where we started measuring so it's gonna be about this area if you go further down it's going to uh, give you a little bit more room if you go up higher it's gonna be a smaller amount so if you need to go around something that's bigger go down a little bit further when you put your buttonhole on so I'm gonna go put mine about right here and I'm gonna go from the back I've got this all matched up and we're gonna go straight in and we'll see where that one goes okay so that's about right there I'm gonna go around these two stitches right here in the middle grab my button pull it on through and leave a nice tail in the back and then go around and I'll make sure I'm going around a whole stitch so it's not just one of the threads of the yarn I'm going around all of it just pull straight on down and just go around here a few times and you'll just tie it off in the back All right. Okay. Got it around here a couple of times. And I know that my flap will button through just by going here and testing it. And that certainly does go through. It looks really good. I'll go over to the back here. And then I'm just going to go through a couple of the these stitches and make a loop and have it go through that loop pull it through and then I'm going to take these two and tie it into a knot just to make sure that it is nice and tight not going anywhere and you're just going to clip that right off uh, you can sew in your, uh, you can weave in your tails or just clip it right off. And I made a nice square knot, so I'm not going to worry about that one. And then just take off your stitch markers that you still have on here. And it is complete. You have made your at your service knit cloth. This should look really great on your oven. I hope you've enjoyed making your knit cloth from yarnspirations.com. On behalf of Yarnspirations and Good Knit Kisses, I'm your host, Kristen, wishing you happy knitting. Bye-bye.